Now we'll look at how to modify our stress reaction from the traditional fight, flight, or freeze to attend and befriend, thereby unlocking our full creative potential. I'll show you two instances, and then we'll both have a chance to practice what we've learned. And one has a more convoluted knot of knots than the other. The first time I encountered this was with a co-worker of mine a few years ago. He told me that he and his co-workers were having trouble socializing because of the increasing frequency with which they used racist and sexist language. And he was particularly outraged since it was at this time that the media began to paint a clearer picture of the widespread violence experienced by African Americans in the streets. And he could not understand that his co-workers were so emotionally detached, intolerant, discriminatory, etc. So, he had one highly aggressive outburst with a bunch, a number of people, when someone said something clearly degrading or belittling, and he mocked or said, don't take things so seriously. Do yourself a favor and stop defending yourself all the time. There's no severe intent behind this behavior. Not long afterward, it happened again. This time, he was so infuriated that he refused to speak up for fear of provoking even more hostility. But he was a practitioner, he regularly meditated and studied the arts. He made the conscious decision to confront it on an inside level. He performed a complete about face when he suddenly felt this, you know, fury. He was filled with rage and aggression towards the people there who had made such degrading remarks. And then he turned around and went back to the spot where he'd first felt the rage, digging deeper and deeper until he reached the source. Fear, fear of the violence in the world, fear of ignorance, and fear of the position of caring coexisted with a strong desire to protect the people he loved about. Because of this, he decided to become involved with a church organization that was investigating issues of racism, white privilege, and similar topics. This helped him immensely since he finally understood that guilt trips aren't the way to get people to confront their biases. To put it simply, no one will voluntarily feel inferior. That was a revelation to him. People have no idea how little they understand. Well, that's good news since it means he won't feel quite as much anger and blame. Additionally, it was helpful because he thought he had the beginnings of the ability to have a dialogue in which, instead of making someone defensive, he could genuinely bring up the question of what is going to establish more of a connection between the races. Furthermore, things were progressing rapidly. It's been about a year and a half since this all started with refugees and with, you know, barring our borders against refugees, when what we need to do is what Canada is doing and open our hearts. Consequently, he started having some talks that didn't lead to defensiveness. What he realized was that inflammation spreads from person to person. That getting all righteous and putting other people down wasn't going to help, and that his response to someone spewing racist words was just as violent as the words themselves. That's when he first felt the effects of battle stress and began having those thoughts and feelings. Still in the midst of the fight-or-flight-freeze response. And what is learning to do, which, I believe, is something we all do slowly but surely. I see that the impulse to withdraw or cling, to pass judgment, or to assume wrongdoing, is always the first thing to set off an emotional reaction in me. Slowdowns, however, are becoming progressively less common. More and more of that lovely phrase from Frankel, Viktor Frankl, that there is a space between the stimulus and the response, is becoming a reality as we begin to practice these attentional strategies. That margin is where our strength and independence lie. Our capacity to evolve is fully realized in that void. Where our future can call us. Towards wholly occupying the range of possibilities available there. 
And that's what he received. What he truly got from all these weeks of training, and white privilege was there more space, and he could feel his care and reach out, but not with the same aggressiveness and blame. An important realization we've made as a world is that retaliation for violence just worsens the conflict. And it will be those who, for whatever reason, aren't better than the others. For whatever reason, some people can shift their focus and disrupt destructive cycles of thought and behavior, creating a place where compassion and wisdom can flourish and help us adapt more effectively when violent situations emerge. It reminds me of ice cubes in a glass of water, where one cube would melt and cause the others to melt as well. The Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King, among others, have shown us how to respond to adversity with compassion by letting their own armor down. We all share that, then. <laughs>